हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू टीचिंग पाठशाला टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज अबाउट द कंट्रोल ऑन इको सिस्टम मेनली द टॉप डाउन कंट्रोल एंड बॉटम अप कंट्रोल दिस टॉपिक वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम द यूनिट ऑफ आर इकोलॉजी दैट इज मेनली फ्रॉम द सी एस आई आर नेट सिलेबस इन द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम सी एस आई आर नेट क्वेश्चन मेनली फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक इन आर इको सिस्टम देर इज अ कंट्रोल ओवर आर स्पीसीज बाई सम अदर स्पीसीज एंड दिस मेक ऑल द थिंग्स इन आर बैलेंस वे और इन आर कंट्रोल वे बिकॉज सम स्पीसीज यूज टू टेक बर्थ एंड सम स्पीसीज डाई this makes the whole balance between the ecosystem because the death rate and the generation or the birth rate that is that is the thing which is making the balance between a perfect ecosystem or you can say that just maintaining the equilibrium so first of all we are going to talk about the control in the ecosystem there is total of a two type of control first one is the top down control and the second one is the bottom up control so first of all we are going to start with the top down control Let's first deal with this tropic level that has been uh, represented in the form of a pyramid, and then we will come to the definition of top-down control. So, from the figure, you can see that there is a total of a four tropic level. In the first tropic level, there is a presence of a primary producer, and the example is the plants. The second tropic level is the consumer, which are herbivores which used to feed on that primary producer, mainly the plant. The third tropic level is the predator, which is also known as the primary carnivores, and they used to feed on the consumer. And the topmost tropic level is the top predator which are also known as the secondary carnivores and they used to feed on the predator that is a primary carnivores so if you want to define a top down control what is it so when this upper tropic level control its lower tropic level at that time we used to say that it's a top down control in this control the predator control the structure and the population of a ecosystem so if you take the example of this pyramid the consumer is going to control the population of a primary producer that means if consumer will feed uh, uh, in a very high amount on a plant then obviously there would be the low population of a plant okay and if predator that is a primary carnivores if it used to feed uh, in a very high amount on a consumer then obviously there would be the low amount of consumer in that ecosystem so with each tropic level every level is going to control by its top level okay primary producer is going to be controlled by the consumer consumer is going to be controlled by the predator and predator population is going to be controlled by the top predator or secondary carnivores this diagram will help you to understand this term more clearly so if we take a example of this eco ecosystem mainly the aquatic ecosystem the, uh, the first level you can see is the presence of a phytoplankton then there uh, there would be the presence of a zooplankton then the small fishes which is also known as the planktivorous and then the large fish which is known as the piscivorous So, if we talk about the terms, so the phytoplankton are the small, small microscopic plants inside our water bodies. Zooplanktons are the small animals or small species that are present in our aquatic system, and uh, there is nothing to explain about the small fish and the large fish. So, if we talk about the top-down control, so you can see that the large fish is going to control the small fish. The small fish is going to control the population of a zooplankton, and the presence of a zooplankton will going to affect the phytoplankton. so let's see how they are affecting each other let's consider that the large fish is having a very low population okay and that is designated by the decline graph of a large fish which is indicating that the biomass with time is getting decreased that means there is a low population of a large fish so if the top level or top tropic level is having a low population of a large fish then obviously in a very low amount the small fish will be consumed by the large fish so that will result in a high population of a small fish because the population of a large fish is very low so there would be the low feeding or the low consumption of a small fish so automatically the population of a small fish will be large so that is indicated with the upright of a graph that is the biomass to time so till now we have seen that the low population of a large fish will result in the high population of a small fish so now the question is that how it is going to affect the population of a zooplankton so just because the high population of a small fish so they are going to feed in a very high amount on a zooplankton so automatically the zooplankton population will be going to decline because the there is a high number of a small fish so they are going to feed in a very high amount on a zooplankton and that obviously will result in a decline or the low population of a zooplankton and that is indicated in a decline graph that is biomass to time graph so as a result we are getting a very low amount of a zooplankton so how this zooplankton is going to affect the phytoplankton so as because zooplankton used to feed on phytoplankton but due to the high feeding by the small fishes there is a very low amount of a zooplankton left so obviously there would uh, there would be the very low amount of feeding on a phytoplankton 
and that will result in a high population of a phytoplankton okay and that is indicated in a form of a upright graph so this is what called the top down control something is controlling from the top and it is affecting the each downward level so if you want to summarize there is a very low population of a large fish that resulted in the high population of a small fish and due to the high population of a small fish there is a low population of a zooplankton because small fish used to feed on a zooplankton and as because there is a very low amount of low population of a zooplankton left there would be the high population of a phytoplankton and the condition we can inverse the condition also like we can consider that firstly there is a high population of a large fish so all the condition will become reverse because if there is a high population of a large fish that will result in a low population of a small fish and as because there would be the low population of a small fish automatically it will affect the zooplankton and zooplankton will have a very high population and if zooplankton will have a high population then it will make the phytoplankton population to decline because it will feed on that so if we reverse the top level of uh, of this series then the whole scenario will become reversed whatever the effect right now we are seeing that the first level is in a decline form the second in upright form if we change the first level we we are going to see the difference in all the level so this is what called the top down control the example of a top down control is the kelp forest ecosystem so kelp forest is mainly the underwater ecosystem or you can say that it is in a form of a forest but under the water sea otter is a uh, marine mammals and sea urchin is one of the echinoderms or a species that used to feed on the kelp forest so in a ecosystem when there is a high population of a sea otter they used to feed on a sea urchin and as a result as because the, there would be the low population of a sea urchin now due to the high feeding that's why there would be the high population of a kelp forest but when the sea otter is very low in population then what happen there is a high population of a sea urchin and as because there is a high population of a sea urchin they are going to feed on the kelp forest by decreasing the kelp forest okay so this is the same thing which we have discussed in the previous slide but this is the real example of the top down control okay sea otter is controlling the sea urchin and sea urchin is controlling the kelp forest so there are total two theory that were controlling the ecosystem or that were giving the idea that how the ecosystem control is mainly balanced or mainly it used to take place so we have talked about the top down control now it's turn of the bottom up control so bottom up control in a ecosystem refers to the ecosystem in which the nutrient supply and the productivity and the type of a primary producer control the ecosystem structure it is a unidirectional model in which the lower tropic level control the higher tropic level in top down control we have seen that the higher tropic level were controlling the lower tropic level but here the situation is totally opposite here lower tropic level organism will control the population of a higher tropic level organism from the name you can say that there is something in the bottom that is controlling the above species okay that's why it is called the bottom up control something from the bottom is going to affect the upper organism the bottom up control there doesn't used to work just like a top down control because in top down control in one tropic level there is a increase in another tropic level there is a decrease in the population but in the bottom up control there is a uniformity in each level or each tropic level the first and the most control will be done by the lower tropic level organism okay or lower tropic level so suppose there is a very high or a good amount of a phytoplankton in an aquatic system so what will happen after, after that so just due to the presence of a high phytoplankton the zooplankton which used to feed on them they will get increased in their number because they are getting a good amount of a food resource so obviously they will have that they will reproduce and they will increase their number okay and as a result of increase in the zooplankton population there would be the increase in a small fish because zooplankton is serving as a food for the small fish so the same rule apply for the small fish also because they are also getting a good amount of a food resource a good amount of a space opportunity they will try to reproduce they will try to increase their population and as because they are increased so that will lead to the increase in the population of a large fish because the same rule apply for the large fish also they are getting a good amount of a food resource so obviously there would be the increase in the population of a large fish because the population used to decline in only one condition when they don't used to get a proper amount of a food resource but here in bottom up control with each level there is a increase in the food resource for the another level okay so that's why there is a uniformity in the graph also you can see that in every graph there is a increase in the biomass to time this is also called the unidirectional model because each level is going to serve as a food resource for the another level so that's why they used to show a uniformity in the graph because abundance of a each tropic level will going to affect the above tropic level and that will going to give rise to the bottom up control 
from the bottom there would be the control which used to start and that would lead to the increase in the number of the above species so till now we have considered a situation when from the bottom that is the phytoplankton is very high in population or there is an abundance of a zooplankton but if we consider a, another situation when there is a very low population of a phytoplankton then what would happen so if there is a very low population of a phytoplankton that will going to affect directly on a zooplankton so zooplankton is not getting a enough amount of a food in a form of a phytoplankton because there is a very low population of a phytoplankton in aquatic system then there will be declination in the zooplankton population and as because the zooplankton will be decline in the number that will be going to affect the small fish and as a result the small fish is also not getting a proper amount of a food in the form of a zooplankton so that will going to affect the large fish because the small fish is serving as a food for the large fish so if there is a decline in the bottom level or the bottom trophic level that will be going to affect the each above level okay and in this way we are going to see a graph in a decline form for the each trophic level so if there is a abundance in the bottom level that will going to show a positive response or positive reaction for the each level but if there is a decline in the bottom level that will going to decline or that will lead to the declination of the each trophic level and that is what called the bottom up control so in this way some controls are like bottom up control some control are like the top down control depending upon the situation depending upon the ecosystem it is supposed to be decided by that species which are living in that ecosystem that what control is going to be there uh, in that ecosystem and how the each species is controlled on a each tropic level so in this way there are many different examples of these two concepts it is a common for population to be influenced by both type of control the bottom up resource set the limits for the maximum healthy population and the top down force kill off individuals from a large population preventing the over exploitation so in this way we can say that the bot in a bottom up control organisms lower in the food web will determine the population size at each level and if we talk about the top down control then the organisms higher up in the food web will determine the population size at each level so if we want to summarize the whole thing we can say that there should be something to control the population in an ecosystem and it is not like that only the bottom up or top down control is also uh, is only there okay there are many type of a control which used to arises at a different situation but there is some evidences from many ecosystem studies that both this type of a control they used to operate to some degree i have tried my best to explain you all the terms in a very simple way because there are many students who are not from this background that is the ecology so i have tried my best to explain it in a as simple way as i can and i hope you have got each and every point from this portion because this topic was very easy and the question which used to come on this topic they are also very easy to solve so let's consider some questions from previous year the first question is from 2014 june a small lake has a three trophic level that is a phytoplankton that is autotroph zooplankton herbivore and the planktivorous fish that is a primary carnivore into this lake a population of a piscivorous fish that is a secondary carnivore was introduced to study the top down effect what is the expected long term consequences of such an introduction to a phytoplankton and a zooplankton trophic level so initially there was only a three trophic level that was the phytoplankton zooplankton and a planktivorous fish and after that they have introduced a secondary carnivore or the piscivorous fish to see a top down effect and now they are asking that after the introduction of the secondary carnivore fish what will be the effect on zooplankton and the phytoplankton so whatever the condition they have given in the question we have just make it into a flow chart okay so there is a introduction of a secondary carnivore and there was already a presence of a primary carnivore zooplankton and a phytoplankton and now they are saying that how it will going to affect the zooplankton and the phytoplankton population so first of all if there is a presence of a secondary carnivore obviously it is going to feed on the primary carnivore and that would lead to the decline in a population of a primary carnivore and as because the primary carnivore will be less in number there will be the increase in the zooplankton because there would be the very less primary carnivore to feed on the zooplankton and as a result there will be the increase in the zooplankton population and as because the zooplankton population is now high they are going to feed in a very high amount on a phytoplankton so now let's consider the options so the first option is zooplankton biomass will increase and phytoplankton biomass will decrease this option is correct okay but we have to eliminate the uh, more three options So the second option is zooplankton biomass will decrease and the phytoplankton biomass will increase. This option is wrong. I have already gave all the explanation from the help of the flow chart. Third option is the biomass of both the zooplankton and the phytoplankton will increase. No, it will not possible because this is the scenario of the bottom up, not the top down. Fourth option: 
the biomass of both zooplankton and the phytoplankton will decrease this option is also not true so the correct answer is zooplankton biomass will increase and the phytoplankton biomass will decrease the next question is from 2015 june two lake that is lake 1 and lake 2 which is a similar trophic structure of a phytoplankton zooplankton and planktivorous fish food chain were chosen to understand the top down effect some piscivorous fish those what feed on the planktivorous fish were introduced into a lake and this planktivorous fish were introduced in a lake 1 this is making a total of a four tropic level lake 2 was enriched by adding a quantity of a nitrate and phosphate to study the bottom up effect over a period of a time changes in the biomass of each tropic level were measured the expected major changes in the two tropic levels are so if we talk about the condition which they have asked in this question so there is a two lake lake 1 and lake 2 and in both of the lake there is already a existence of a three tropic level that is a phytoplankton zooplankton and the planktivorous fish that is a small fish and in lake 1 they have introduced one more trophic level that is a piscivorous fish which used to feed on that planktivorous fish or a small fish and in lake 2 they have added a nitrate and phosphate okay and in lake 1 they are expecting to see a result for the top down effect and in lake 2 they are expecting a result for the bottom up effect so first let's talk about the lake 1 which is supposed to show a top down effect okay so the whole explanation for the lake one will be the same what we have discussed for the previous question everything will be totally same okay here is also they are introducing the fourth level that is a plank uh, piscivorous fish and this piscivorous fish is going to feed on the small fish okay and as because there is a decline in the small fish due to the feeding by the large fish there will as a result there will be the increase in the zooplankton population and as because there is a high number of a zooplankton they are going to feed on a phytoplankton and that will result in the decline population of a phytoplankton so for lake one we can say that there is an increase in the zooplankton population and there will be decrease in the phytoplankton population okay and if you talk about the second lake which is supposed to show a bottom up effect we have talked in our uh, previous slide that if if there is an ecosystem which is supposed to show a bottom up effect at that time anything that has been uh, given to the bottom tropic level that is going to affect the east tropic level that are present on above that okay so if a bottom tropic level is going to feed with some of the nutrients like nitrate and phosphate obviously that will going to give a positive response to the next above level okay so we can say that there will be the increase in the phytoplankton as well as there will be the incre increase in the zooplankton there will be the increase in the population of a planktivorous fish there will be the increase in the population of a piscivorous fish so according to the option we are going to see that which option is best fitted for our conclusion so the first option is the in lake one zooplankton biomass increase phytoplankton biomass decrease okay this statement is correct let's see what is there in a second statement in lake two both phytoplankton and the planktivorous fish biomass increase okay so uh, with our conclusion we can uh, for now we are considering that the option one is correct because it is totally best fitted for whatever the conclusion we have made for this question the second option is in lake one zooplankton biomass decrease and the phytoplankton biomass increase this is wrong in lake two both phytoplankton and the planktivorous fish biomass increase this statement is true but the above statement is wrong so overall the second uh, second option is wrong the third option is in lake one Planktivor planktivorous fish biomass and the phytoplankton biomass degrees this uh, line is correct the second line is in lake 2 phytoplankton biomass increase and the planktivorous fish biomass decrease this line is wrong so overall the statement or the option 3 is also wrong the fourth option is in lake 1 planktivorous fish and the zooplankton biomass increases this option is wrong because there is an increase in the zooplankton biomass but there is a decrease in a planktivorous fish and the second line is that in lake 2 both plank uh, phytoplankton and the planktivorous fish biomass increases this statement is also correct but the first line is wrong so overall the fourth option is also wrong so the correct answer is the answer one that is in lake 1 zooplankton biomass increases and the phytoplankton biomass decreases and in lake 2 both phytoplankton and the planktivorous fish biomass increases so with this we have finished the topic of top down and bottom up control if this video was helpful for you then don't forget to hit that like button and if you are new to my channel you can subscribe my channel for getting more such videos. Thank you.